Brother John, would you care to lead us in a word of prayer? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to be able to come before you and give thanks for those things that we often take for granted and to be able to worship you in spirit and truth. Heavenly Father, we understand that we are now in trying times and with this virus and everything, and it's important that we maintain safety between each one of us. So we'll come through this with no ill health or anything. We ask, Father, you be with those brothers and sisters who may be sick or going through difficult times, that you be with them, inspire them, and give them the courage and the knowledge to be able to best deal with the situations they find themselves in. Provide for them, Father. Allow man to give them the best medical treatment that he has to offer. We ask, Father, that you forgive us of any transgressions that we may have committed against you and remember those against us no more. We ask, Father, to thank you for your son who made the ultimate sacrifice on Calvary and that by his sacrifice we now have remission of sins. We ask, Father, to be with those in Washington or that are still deeply confused because they failed to give up the doctrine of men and start listening to the to your words and your doctrine so our country would be in a better condition than what it is now. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Good to see you with us, Calvin. We wasn't sure. Yeah, he yeah, I, I wasn't sure either. I'm, I'm just going to be listening tonight. I'm, I've been down all week. Well, hang in there. And if you have any thoughts about it, uh, jump right in. Last week we talked about uh, the unforgiven, the unmerciful servant, in which uh, it taught us of the necessity of a forgiving spirit. Uh, the night's lesson is going to revolve around also talking about the character of individuals more than more than the character of the of the of the kingdom of heaven as a whole this parable is a the labor of the the laborers in the vineyard uh we'll read through it first and then we'll start looking at the different thoughts concerning it it shows up in matthew chapter 20 i got 16 through 22. i must have well, you're on Matthew 19, too. Matthew 19. Let me see what I've done here. Okay. Uh, I haven't got the, the, the parable up there. Uh, so let's start with the, let's start with the, with how it come about here. Uh, in Matthew chapter 19, we'll, we'll read the parable in parts as we go through. That's what I, I had it at the beginning, but I didn't, I didn't put it on the screen. And uh, we're going to look at the, at what, what, why did he come about doing this parable is, is an important reason. And uh, what we're going to do is look at that first as to the reason why. And the, the thing that we have is the conversation here is with the rich young ruler. Uh, it says, and behold, one came to him saying, good master, what good thing shall I do to have eternal life? And, and he said unto him uh, that, and he said unto him, why, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if, if thou wilt enter into life, uh, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, which? Uh, Jesus said, uh, thou shalt not do murder thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness honor thy father and thy mother and and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself the young man said to said to him all these things have i kept from my youth what lack i yet jesus said unto him uh, if thou will be perfect go and sell and 
that, that which thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasures in heaven and come and, and follow me. Uh, but when the young, young man heard these sayings, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Uh, this kind of, this is the conversation that Jesus just had with them before he told them the parable of the, of the laborers in the vineyard. And uh, of course, we, we read this one before, and it seems like the young man is trying to put a point on something he could do to earn salvation. Yeah. So he said, I've done all these commandments and things like that, but, but what, what is there that I can do is almost like what he's asking. In other words, some personal responsibility or some activity that he could do that could earn him a position. Uh, in the course of this conversation, Jesus challenges a young man to give up all he has and follow him. And of course, the young man would not do that. So in that discussion with the, with the, with the disciples, he began to tell them the, 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 the uh, um, var, var, parable of the, of the uh, uh, labors in the vineyards. But before he told them that, right after he told them this story about the, 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 the young, uh, the good, the young man, the rich young man, uh, the conversation went from that to this. Then Jesus said unto the disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man still shall hardly enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's actually just told the story about the rich young ruler. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Uh, when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? You know, he's looking at the rich young ruler who had done all this and and it, it, it's hard to, uh, almost nobody, and, and uh, uh, the, who can be saved? Verse 26, but Jesus beheld, beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. In other words, they were almost looking at it being something you could earn or something that, that, that belonged to you because of something that you had done. And, and we know that, that none of that's the truth. And Jesus now uses this opportunity uh, to discuss this with them in a parable. Uh, the, 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 the disciples were wondering uh, what could they do to be saved? So it raised a question by Peter. Then answered Peter and said unto him, behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? In other words, it's like we deserve more than somebody else. We've, do, we've done everything we can do, Lord, and, and, and what, what are you going to do for us now? Uh, if, if, if everybody has the same opportunity to be saved and we've forsaken all and give up all and give up all this time in our lives to follow you, then what's in it for us? That's kind of a selfish question, isn't it? Yeah. But unlike the rich young man, Peter and the disciples had accepted and challenged uh, the challenge to give all up and to follow Jesus. So then we move on to Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, that shows us what the disciples did. And as we read through this, we see him go and call Simon and Peter, and they give up everything. And Simon, Peter, and, and, and Andrew, his brother, and he goes to James and John, the, uh, the sons of Zebedee, and look at verse 22. And they immediately left the, the ship and their fathers and followed him. So he asked the question, what shall we have there for? In other words, it, really it seems like Peter's still here under a, a very bad misunderstanding that, that they've, done, they, they've done something to earn this, and which we know that's not possible. It appears that Peter is wanting to know if the rich, if the rich cannot be saved, though barely, what more will those who are raised who give up all and follow Christ? I really think Peter's motives are pure here. I don't think he really understands totally what, he's, what his words are saying, but his motive is right. Uh, I don't think he was motivated totally by desire. I think he, he was motivated by, by, by Jesus and, and, and this. So, so Jesus is waiting. This is almost getting to a point of, of saying, can we earn salvation? So Jesus gives them this lesson to, as a preemptive strike, sort of. In other words, to say, 
before you get into that, before you go any further, Peter, and get to the point of merit, mer meritous behavior, I want to tell you about a, about a, I want to give you another parable to listen to. And that's when we get ready to go into the fight parable. Any thoughts or comments? Well, that has a lot to do with what Paul said in Ephesians 2 8 when he said, For by grace are we saved through faith, not of works. So the Apostle Paul made it abundantly clear that we could work our entire life and still never have enough good works to earn salvation. And of course, James elaborates on that a whole lot. But I think that's, that is kind of the point here. Now, I think this rich young ruler, he stood this rich is above Christ. Well, yeah, he put everything above Christ. He done, he he claimed he done various things, but he's he didn't put up he didn't yeah, put up he did. no treasures for himself. He loved his money more than he loved Ex Christ. He exactly. didn't put Christ first. Look, I agree with you, hundred <laughs> percent. But he, but if you know, <clears throat> it seems like we all you you know if you thinking the thoughts of man it seems like we ought to get to have some way of earning everything and and that's what pro happens even with these disciples like peter who's been following jesus those still things of, of human nature creep in sometimes and try to drag us down that's why it's so important that that we study the scriptures and understand where this parable's coming from not just that it's a parable but where's it coming from in verse Matthew 9, 19, 28 through 30, it says, Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, you have all followed me. In the generation when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of glory, you shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone that has forsaken house or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or land or for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first, now he's leading up to the to the uh, uh, parable. But many who shall be first, and the last shall be and shall be last, and the last shall be first. What he's really saying here is, no matter how long you've been with me, if you've been with me three years, one year, six months, or twenty years, you're going to receive the same reward. Yeah, that's really what he's trying to tell him here. Any thoughts? That's a good point. In Matthew 28, he's talking specifically now. If you look at what he's saying in verse 28, it says, Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye, that's singular, talking to the apostles that are there. It's not talking to everybody. That ye which followed me, that's only the apostles, in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you shall sit with me on 12 thrones. Okay, he's talking to them specifically there. But jump down to verse 29, and he's, and he's talking to everybody. He's talking to us. We're included here. He says, and everyone that forsaketh house, and so forth, Explain. Uh, shall inherit eternal life. I'll try what? Where it says he will sit on the throne of his glory and you shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. What is that? The only thing I can think that that could possibly be is what took place during the New Testament. Because these people that he's talking to are the writers of the things that will be judging everybody else. The 12 tribes of Israel won't be judging people. It'll be the things that the apostles wrote in the New Testament. Okay. So when they sit upon the throne of His glory, and they did that while they was here on earth, that was not 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 in heaven, but the church heaven, the, the heaven here on earth. Uh, oh, okay. They sit upon the twelve thrones. In other words, they dictated all the things that God wanted them to do. They were over the whole church, and they would be the judgment of all with the words that they would teach. The apostles would, yeah. 
So he's just talking to the apostles in that first, in verse 28. And in verse 29, he includes all of us as being in heaven. And everyone that forsaketh house or brother and so forth shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. So the first, I, I mean, that's just my thoughts, my concepts on it, Dylan, that, that he's okay. talking about the period of time in which the 12 uh, apostles would, or not these 12 actually, but uh, because uh, uh, Judas hangs himself, but uh, the apostles would govern over the church here on earth. And I believe that's what he's talking about. You might do some research and find something else on it. I, we could try that. But this would be my, that would be my thought on it. Anybody well, else have a thought on it? Well, we know the 12 tribes got scattered. Yeah. In the end. And some of them were never found. But they're out there somewhere. Under the Jewish law, they were 12 tribes. Right? Yeah, under the Jewish law. I mean, Mosaic law. Anybody have another thought on it? Well, it says in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. So that means that when he goes back, when he rises again and goes home to be with the Father, then they shall sit upon the 12 thrones, judging that 12 tribes. So I would say what you're saying is probably true uh, because he will have already ascended back yep. in day. And um, I, I'd say you you're right. I can check on that more and everybody else can too. And, and we'll see if we can, if anybody comes up with anything different, we'll come back up and discuss it again. How does that sound? It sounds okay. good. So uh, the first part, the apostles are there, and the second one, he talks about yeah. the, the promises to all of us. Uh, and the, the, I, the, this goes along with that, Dylan. Uh, this next verse, uh, Matthew 16 and 19, and he said, "And I will give unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven." And they gave the, he gave them those keys, and they opened the keys, opened books, yeah. opened yeah. gates, opened doors. And whatsoever shall be bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. So what they done during those times, and it was bounded. I mean, it's already bound by God. So yeah. What what went on on earth was bound in heaven too, and whatever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So I think that all kind of works together to to put it in that direction. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Look look at the book of Matthew twenty eight. Uh, 19 verse 29 through 30 and look at, uh, again at what we just read Jesus said unto them verily I say unto you that you shall you which have followed me and then he talks about the, the tribe and everyone that forsakes for me but look at verse 30 but many that are first shall be last, and last shall be first in other words there's no pecking order yeah. You know, in everything that we do in this world, it seems like there's a pecking order. But there's no pecking order here. Everybody's going to be equal. No one's going to be able to say, look what I earned or look what I did. Yeah. Again, that statement, but many shall be, or that, that many that are first, in other words, the disciples are first, but they're not going to be ahead of anybody else in the, in the life eternal in heaven. Thoughts or comments? Well, that also means regardless of how long, like you said a while ago, how long you've been a Christian, you won't be in any better shape or any worse shape than anyone else. It's getting to heaven is all that matters. Right. Yeah, it don't matter if you're a Christian for 50 years or one day. You get to say right. the I didn't hear that. It don't matter if you're 50 well, years or one day. Yeah. Now, that, that doesn't lead us to believe in this deathbed repentance. Right. Okay? That's not what this is talking about, and that's not what we're trying to indicate. Uh, all these people that are involved in this uh, uh, parable that we're going to look at tonight are people who did work for, the, for God. It's not that they didn't do anything. They did. Matthew 19 30, same verse. So the last shall be first and first shall be last. He repeated that in Matthew 20 and 16. 
uh, he said, uh, "For the many, for many are called, a few are chosen. Uh, all, all are called, but there's very few that choose to follow the direction that God gives them. So uh, this warning is both precedes that light, that statement, Matthew 20 and 26. If you will look, I'm, I'm, I didn't mention that, but look, this occurs before." Right before he does the the uh, parable, nineteen and thirty. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And when he finishes the parable, he says, "So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many shall be called, but few are chosen." So it's kind of a bookends to the to the parable, and it's the same warning in both situations. So since there's such a strong warning. Uh, I think we need to heed that warning. Yeah, I think it goes along nicely with Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Seek ye first. Well, no. Enter ye into the... I'll have to look at If somebody's got that there, you'd be able to find what Which I'm talking Which verse is it, John? Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Uh... It's about forgiveness. Well, it deals with... 11, 13, and 14, I think, is about forgiveness. Right. No, it's, it deals with enter ye into the straight gate. Okay, you're right, John. Yeah. Enter ye in through the straight gate, for straight is the way and narrow is the way to go to God, but wide is the way to go to destruction. Yeah. Uh, that's paraphrasing. Okay, let's look at the parable now. Uh, that's kind of an introduction to get us to understand the situation that's going on when Jesus delivers this parable. Beginning in Matthew 20, verse 1 through 16, he says, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man as a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers in, in his vineyard, and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into the vineyard. Uh, He gets these guys and he, he offers them a job uh, and uh, they go out and go to work and it starts early in the morning. Well, later at a different time, different hour of the day, he finds and hires more men, them also for a fair but unspecified wage. Listen to what he says. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Now, let's remember the comments that goes on here. Others stand idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I'll give you. They didn't agree to a certain amount. But he said, uh, if you'll go this, uh, I'll pay you a fair amount. Again, he went out the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise. So each time he went out, he found people, and he got, he got them to agree to go to work, and he would pay him a fair, pay him a fair wage. Verse six, and about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idly and said unto them, why stand you here all day idle? They said unto him, because no man has hired us. He said unto them, go ye, go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right, uh, that shall ye receive. Okay, at the end of the day, he started these guys in the morning and, and told them what they'd get paid and. Uh, through the day, he hired people, and at the end of the day, well, I guess what we would call uh, it's probably getting dark at nine. He probably found these people at eight o'clock, and he offered them work too. But if you notice one of the statements they made, and it's an important statement, because no man has hired us. Let's not forget that statement. We're going to come back and discuss that in just a moment. It's an important statement. <sighs> Any thoughts or comments to that point? So when Eve was come, the Lord of the vineyard uh, said unto his servants, Call the laborers and give to them their hire, beginning from the last to the first. Now think of how important that is. He gave, he paid the people who come at 11 o'clock first, the people that come at the end of the day and probably only worked an hour. He paid them first. What would you think if it, if you come early in the morning and worked all day and the first guy got a hundred dollars? I got a long got story about that. <laughs> <laughs> that 
think you're going to get a good payday, <laughs> wouldn't you? Well, let's look that at what happened. happened. That, huh? Yeah, that's what it was talking about. I it's had a job. In church for 50 years, that somebody come in or just been there. They applied yeah. for the same reward. I know what that is, what that means, but I had a job that I'd worked with this man for years. And he bought a new restaurant and put me assistant manager of it. And he told me how much he would give me. He brought a new girl in there, had never worked for him and didn't do half the work I did. And she was making more money than I did. And I found it out and I went to him and told him I was quitting if I didn't get as much money as she did. And he looked me right in the eye and he said, what did I promise you? And I told him, he said, did I give you that? I said, yeah. And he said, case closed. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he told the truth, but when I got my next payday, I was making more money than she was. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, he, he done what he promised, but sometimes, you know, yeah. you still treat somebody bad, even if you make a promise to them. Yeah, but he looked me right in the eye and he said, you know, did I not promise you what you promised? I said, yeah. He said, then case closed. <laughs> so uh, that's not yeah. like this. It's about, you know, I thought about this when it, when that happened. Yeah, you would think about it. It's, it's, that's a good, that's a good story. Uh, but he wasn't trying to prove a point to you. No, he didn't realize it. He may, he may not have realized it at he all. He didn't. He didn't because his wife told me later he didn't even realize it. Okay, so he started at the, at the life, and when they came that were hired about the 11th hour, they received every man a penny. Now, it's not a penny in our day's wage, of course. No. Uh, but when the first come, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, these, these have life's wrath but one hour, and thou has made them equal unto us, which we have borne the burden and the heat of the day. So they had worked all day long, and they felt that they reserved. And I understand their complaint. I think any of us in a, in a physical environment would complain in the same way. Uh, uh, just as, okay. as Dylene said she did. Uh, yeah. I think any of us would complain. And uh, the, the landowner responded in a positive way. He said, mm -hmm. I treated you fairly, for you received yeah. according to our agreement. Uh, I wish to pay the others the same. Uh, in other words, it seems like uh, I can't, like they're almost saying, you don't have the right to do that. Well, you know, if I want to give somebody a thousand dollars, I have the right to do that. It's my thousand dollars. Right. And if I give you what I agreed to give you, I have the right to do that. Any thoughts or comments? Well, it's coming back to the same thing. Uh, don't matter if you've been a Christian 50 years or or two days, you're going to see it, receive the same reward as the one that's been earth the long. The human aspect is. <clears throat> the human aspect, yeah. Yeah, is that. Uh, I look at it like, well, you cheated me, buddy. I ain't going to work for you no more. And, and, and absolutely that that you have the right to do and these people that come at the at the 11th hour here i mean come in the morning worked all day had every right in the world to refuse to go back and work for that guy yeah every right in the world but if we look at the explanation of what the man done why he done it calvin you got something yeah if i can get it out the way i want to calvin um, said two pounds. with you think about this at verse 8 it says when even was come beginning late in the day at 11th hour after the 11th hour there's still one more hour so your 11th hour is going to be between four and five o'clock in the afternoon for us because the end of the day began if we if we uh look at the way they uh looked at time uh the the last hour would be between uh five and six 
six would be the end of the day and begin the evening or at night, begin the night. So that would be uh, the eleventh hour is when uh, when they went out and hired the last ones, and then they were to uh, uh, to pay them at uh, at the end of that eleventh hour, I guess. And you still got one more hour. And there's another scripture, and I was about to look it up, but it talks about the nighttime comes when no man can work. So yep. that's that's the difference between the working day and night. Okay. So basically, they were paid for a day's wages. Yes. And whether or not a person a come wages. in at the eleventh hour or the tenth hour, it's still going to be a day's wages, even though yeah. one man may work an hour longer than another. And and we're talking about the daytime here, the light, yeah. the the daylight is when they're working. So you, you've got 12 hours uh, average, uh, 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. And uh, that we could go into a whole lot of that because of the different seasons and the different, uh, uh, the different uh, uh, regions that people are in. Like right now, we're in, we're in the fall and days are getting shorter, nights are getting longer, but you still got an average of 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night over the world. Yeah. yeah over the whole world, yeah. Yeah. But now, we have to remember, we're talking about parables here. Yes. Yeah. Jesus yeah. has never seen that this incident happen. <laughs> He's just telling this as a, as, as, as a thing to get us to understand the spiritual thing. Yeah. So in this, he's not saying this actually happened. Right. But it could happen. It's something that could happen. So it's not something that actually happened, but uh, a, a, a story, it's more of a story than it is an actual event, a story to get us to understand a spiritual thing. And that's what we've got to look at to see. Because yeah, people will come to you and say, well, uh, if I can be hired at the last or the end of the day, I'll just wait before I become Christian. But yeah. that don't work. No. <laughs> you might not make it to the end of the day. Right. You might not make Thank it. You. You may, you'll be, you'll, you might make it. You'll make it to the end of your day. Yeah. But that's also like saying uh, <clears throat> if, if a new Christian at the last hour becomes a Christian, and, and the, the man that's been a Christian for, say, the whole 11 hours. Uh, has got the, got the same opportunity. Uh, the one hour man doesn't have any more uh, benefits because they both have the same uh, uh, benefit to become a Christian according to their, uh, I guess, what they do. Well, these people were called. Uh, Think about it. Uh, John, how long have you been a Christian? About six years now. Shouldn't you have the same reward in heaven as a person that's been there, been a member of the church for 20 years? And that's what this here is getting to. Yeah. This is getting us to understand. Remember the bookends I mentioned? The first shall be last and the last shall be first. He gives them that warning at both ends. In other words, when you come to be a member of the body of Christ, you have that much time left to work for God. Well, These people me, had the whole day to work for God. And they'll get the you, same reward as that person that worked one day. Let me ask you this. What about the brother that's been a Christian for, let's say, 20 years, and he is now an elder? And I'm still where I'm at today. We if both. you haven't grown, you haven't done what you haven't done the work you're supposed to do. Well, I may not have grown uh, and may not never be an elder, but the problem is it looks like to me that him as elder is, is got a heavier load on his shoulders now. And I, but he took that load. He didn't have to. Yeah. It had to be something he wanted. 
and each one of us can only do what we have the ability to do. God doesn't expect any more out of us than what we can do, but he expects everything that we can do. So we've got a situation here that we're trying to get it to relate to a spiritual concept so it can, so it can help us to grow as Christians. Let's, let's look at this response. But he anchored one of them and said, friend, I do you no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that that is thine and go thy way. I will give thee, I will give unto the last, even as unto thee. In other words, it's my choice to give out what I give out. Does he not have the right, the farmer, the owner, to do what he wants to do with yeah, his he money? Yeah, yeah. He goes on to say, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine? Is thy evil I because I am good? And then Jesus concludes it with that last statement that he said. So the last shall be first and the first life. For maybe you, for many may be called and few will be chosen. You cannot earn anything in heaven. And that's what this message is going to. It's getting us to, to, to understand that no matter how long we're a Christian, as long as we do the work that we're hired to do, and in, in the situation, I'm just using this situation, uh, our reward will be at the end. We can't expect, expect any more reward because we've been a Christian for 20 years than we can if someone's been a Christian for one year. The reward will be the same and that will be heaven. In other words, there'll be no levels of reward. It'll all be the same. There'll be no earning anything. You remember what uh, John mentioned a while ago, uh, uh, saved by grace by faith, lest anyone should boast. No one can brag about how much work they've done. And that's what this one guy was doing. He was saying, look how much we've done. You know, it doesn't make a difference. As long as we're doing everything we can do for God, that's what God expects. This parable is a response to Peter's question. You remember the question that he asked back at the first? If, if, if it's so difficult for everybody to get into heaven, what's in it for us? We've served you all this time. Now, what are we going to get out of it? You know, that's kind of what Peter was, was asking. The first workers represent the apostles. Let's think about that for a minute. As we look at the, the thought of this parable, the first workers that come that morning, let's think of them as the apostles and others like them, uh, such as, uh, um, who was that that uh, got uh, stoned to death? Stephen. Stephen, Stephen. Uh, Stephen, Stephen. and Barnabas and Paul, which will come later, and, and, and so forth. Uh, those are the first ones called to work, okay? And, and, and think of how long they, they, the rest of their lives there, they were members of the body of Christ. And the labor is long and hard in a vineyard. Of course, we know the vineyard represents the kingdom of God here. The other workers represent those who are called by Christ at various times. In other words, those who were called in the first century, the second century, the third century, all the way up now to the 21st century. Some of whom are called late in life. Some are, some people become members of the body of Christ early. Uh, my son, Jeremy, became a, a member of the church when he was 10 years old. Uh, I was, uh, I think I was 32, I think. It's 85 and I was born in 52, so that would be 33 years. Wow. I was 33. so. And uh, other people may have become Christians at different times in the age in their life. So they've got that amount of time to work. I was 14. 14? Yeah. Okay. You, you've okay. been around there a long time. But the thing of it is, you've been there for, well, 14, what, 40 or 50 years? I'm 76 years old, so 62. Is that what it is? Yeah. I was trying to be nice to you there. Oh, I don't care. I'm proud of it, honey. The good Lord left me, let me live to be 76. I'm proud of it. <laughs> you should be. But the thing of it is, it doesn't matter. It, it, this means how much time we've got in our life to work and how old we was and all this together, we still will receive the same reward in heaven because of the yeah. verse here. Look again. So the last shall be first and the first last 
and many shall be called, but few are chosen. So uh, as we work through life to improve ourselves as Christians, I'm not, I, it, it's hard not to put uh, earning and things like that in there because that's in our man's concept in our mind. Uh, so as we work in the life, the amount of time that we have to work is what God expects out of us. So, uh, so the main part of the parable is ever how much time we've got to work for God, we need to work for God. We don't need to be leaving anything else. And God is generous with all. And if, if when we get to heaven, if there's any kind of jealousy in your bones because somebody's there that's just a Christian for a week, there's a problem with you. Yeah, I, I want to see everybody go to heaven. If they ain't been there but an hour, I'd like to see everybody go to heaven. Uh, absolutely. And, and you know, th that's what we got to understand. No matter how long we're, we work in the church, we're no better than anyone else that's worked any other amount of time. Or they're no better than we are. So uh, we got to work together on this because it's, it is a, a team effort. It's an individual effort, I agree. Don't get me wrong. It's still a team effort. Everybody needs to pull their load and do their share of the work. But we still have individual things that we have to do to, to make sure we get to heaven. Well, you know, um, Elias, I've been, like we said, I've been with it 64 years. But I learned something new every time I picked the Bible up. And you would think I, in 64 years I would have learned it all. <laughs> Am I that dumb? <laughs> <laughs> Darling, every time I pick up anything, I try to learn something from it. I do. I, I, don't think, I, I don't know of anybody that I know of that if they pick up the Bible and earnestly look for something to learn, they will learn something. But we have to be searching for the truth. But it's you just know, like, I, you know, why do we become a Christian? It better be for the right reason. Right. It better not be for some alternative reason and. And, and it seems like some people do. It's not for what we can gain out of it. It's just so we can maybe be able to get to heaven. Calvin? You think about it for the right reason, there's only one reason everything else is wrong. Right. If, That's right. if you think, Absolutely. if you try to do it for a different reason, guess what? You don't make the grade. Right. It don't work, so you're not a Christian. So you better get it right. The principles is one thing that we cannot disagree on and be right. Exactly. I think that's why Peter. That's why Jesus told this uh, this par parable, because Peter was on the verge of looking at meritorious behavior to become to be saved. He was on the verge of that. I think he could have stepped into it real easy with much more. So Jesus is doing something here to try to stop him from going any farther. Peer, peer pressure don't get it either, and that's that's what we need to be concerned about, uh, young people. Is peer pressure? If peer pressure causes them to uh, to step into something that they don't understand, yes, and that's a dangerous thing. Yeah, it's something that that's, not that's why it's so it. important. And and Calvin, sometimes we make the mistake. We didn't make this mistake with John because we really worked hard with John. John, when he first became a Christian up there, sometimes a person becomes a Christian and we leave it up on themselves to learn. In other words, Matthew 28 says, teach, baptize, and then teach again. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. yeah. We don't stop teaching. Now, John, John was an industrious learner, and he still is. But John, but John grew fast, and, and there were people that was at the church building that when we were there, we were all there to encourage. But sometimes we look at a, a person of John's age, and we say, well, they've already got what they need. Well, he didn't have what he needed, no. and he knows that at that time. And sometimes and we something. leave young people out. My, we need to I, encourage everybody. You gotta that's understand. something that all of us need to understand, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though he was old in age, he was still a babe in Christ. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and but sometimes I, we lose that, that thought. I come from a long line of faith alone teachers because uh, everybody that I ever I ever talked to, all you had to do was call on the name of the Lord, and, and that was it. And it, you know, seemed like it was very easy, but it's not as easy as it seems. Because but if you listen, if you pay attention to Apostle Paul's conversion, 
actually, if you understand faith alone, calling on the name of the Lord, it, it teaches in his conversion what uh, calling on the name of the Lord is. Mm. Yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, Tony, People say, don't understand what calling on the name of the Lord is when they start talking that way. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Cornelius or Ananias tell him, mm. why tarries thou? Rise and be baptized, wash away the sin, calling upon the name of the Lord. Acts 23 16. Yeah. I like also what Paul had to say in uh, in Romans uh, Romans 10 verse 13 about calling on the name of the Lord. That's where a lot of people pull that verse out and they see that's yeah, all I have, have to do. To the next verse and read either, yeah, then. we were going through that earlier today. But we have to understand why he wrote this. Uh, this, in, other, in order to understand the parable, we have to understand why it's written. And it's written because of Peter's question. And I think Peter was close to go, getting into that problem. Uh, remember I mentioned these people that come at the 11th hour. What was their reasoning that they'd never, that they hadn't been working? Hadn't been called to work. Yeah, they wasn't they called. Hired. They said unto him, because no man had hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye into, also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall be received. There's a lot of people out there that no one's, I'm not saying they've never heard the gospel, okay? I think I think the gospel was preached to every creature under heaven, and, and people have all those opportunities today. But sometimes, sometimes people are there, and no one said, Have you been <clears throat> to church lately? Won't you go to church with me? These people here has to have the same opportunity for the same reward that we do. Because when they were called, they responded and went to work. They didn't put it off. They accepted the offer as soon as they heard it. Though it was late in the day, they felt the option. They were not a people. They didn't turn it down. Uh, the opportunity hadn't been there for him, according to this. And if anyone accepts the gospel of Christ in the last moment in their life, that's acceptable. That's, as, that's just as good as ones who accepted it a long time ago. Yeah. We need to be, we need to be thankful that God is there until the last. Right. Yeah. We may be the one that needs to be forgiven at that last. That's Our absolutely right. Day. So that right. as Christians need to be thankful that he is there and he's still there for us. Now, when, when we hear the statement like Shelby's talking about here, when we hear the statement deathbed repentance, this is not someone that's a member of the body of Christ. That's not what we're talking about. A member of the body of Christ, I believe honestly, could have deathbed repentance. They could be on the verge of death and they could uh, the, because they've already been a member of the body of Christ. Now, if they've ignored God for 50 years, I, 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 you know, you got to look at that. But uh, uh, if a Christian asks God, if a Christian repents and asks God for forgiveness, God will forgive him. But deathbed repentance is reference to a person who's never been a member of the body of Christ or the member of the church and at the last minute thinks they can do what they, and that's what some people might think with this here. You know, uh, why, why, why become a Christian when I'm, uh, 20 years old when I can wait till I'm 80 and get the same benefit because you might let live to be 80. I talk. Well, I, I look talk, at him and say, why not be a Christian? I talked to two fellows that worked one day and they were talking about a fellow that they knew. He was in the hospital. He was on his deathbed. And no, these people weren't, weren't Christians. These people, this fellow that was on his deathbed was not a Christian. And they talked about that he, I don't know where they said opened his eyes, but he, he looked up uh, and asked God uh, to forgive him. And they took that as, as uh, a conversion on his deathbed. And I, I talked to him a little bit about it, but we got right down to the end of it. I said, I said, God, don't ask for you in your death. God requires 
you to, pre to present your bodies a living sacrifice. That's what he wants. Absolutely. And, and that's uh, what he one, one looked at the other and said, you know, he's right. Did they do anything about it? I don't know. Well, now think about the parable we just looked at. Those yep. people still had an hour of work. Yeah. They had time to work. That's what I tried. That's what I mentioned early when we started first start doing this sermon. Everybody this lesson, everybody that, that's in that parable did some work for God. Yes. So it wasn't a, it wasn't at the last second of their life, but it was in the last part of their life. And you can't do an hour's work when you're laying there dying. No, you, God, you, God you have to make it, it. You you have to be looking at the principles, and you have to make it all the way through baptism. And and that's the only way you get into Christ. And that's what I teach people. If you're not there, you're not going to make it. Okay. But he does God. offer. He does yes, offer he for, does the, offer. for the body of Christ that's fallen away, an opportunity and, to come back. And that's what I was trying to tell these people when I was talking to them, that uh, that was an offer. That was that was God's <laughs> offer. Yeah. And don't it say in the Bible that there'd be a time when no man can. Uh, when the night time cometh when no man can work. And that means yep. death. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's. Fine. Yes, that yeah. means death because we can't do nothing after we're dead. Well, I, you know, I've argued with that deathbed confession for an awful long time, and the reason I, I've had trouble with it was because of my mom back in 1960, and uh, see, they told me that she held her hand up and smiled before she passed on, and I've had. And I've discussed the same point with several Church of Christ preachers. <laughs> and a lot of them, of course, I understand what one must do to become a Christian. One must hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized for the remission of sin. But, you know, when it comes down to somebody asking me a question like that, I have to say that that is between God and that individual. Because I agree with I, you. I don't know what circumstances in her life she had with God or what the circumstances. I do know what is required to become a Christian. But someone makes a deathbed confession, I just have to say that's between God and that person. And, and I have to leave it at that. Because I well, we're discussing this among ourselves. Yeah. I, I find one of the best ways to answer that question that, that was asked is quite similar to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But then I, I would tell them that I'm not the authority, that God is the authority. You ask God that question. And the only way they can ask God that question is to turn to the Bible, read the Bible, and find the answer to it. It's there. It is there. Oh, you must be in Christ. Yeah, and if you ain't obeying yeah. the gospel, there ain't no hope for you. Because I know I've got 10 people, even my daughter died, and I know ain't no hope for her. Me too, Dor 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 Two brothers that passed on the same thing, and, yeah. and it's the same and, thing. And but the point is, if a person is having those feelings, we don't want to make them feel worse. We want to do the best job we no. can. So I believe the best thing is to say, tell them that that decision's already been made. That, like John said, that's between God and that person. Let's work on you. Let's work on your yeah. salvation. My daughter-in-law. We can't do daughter. anything about the other one, but that my we can daughter. do something about. My daughter-in-law asked me, what about my dad? I said, I can't do anything about your dad, period. So we can't talk about it. Yeah, because you're, you're not going to win anything if, with an argument. No. no. Not there. 
Because the, Bi people. the Bible says the dead know not nothing. Well, if we know this Bible, we know what how people die. That's the way it is. They Salvation is that's for the living. Come into the judgment. We know that. We ain't stupid. The only <laughs> thing we know that God will judge those in the end for things done in this body on this earth. Most people who ask that question, the majority of the people are wanting to argue with you anyway. That's yeah. not yeah. a legitimate question. That is yeah. a question they want to challenge the church of Christ with. I gave my and daughter in law the account of the rich man on Lazarus. Well, that this we gotta remember why this why this message is here. It's in response to Peter's question. And it's in response to Peter's question is that we cannot earn heaven, but as soon as we have an opportunity, we need to be doing it. If you'll look back at every one of the people. When he got the first people in the morning, they went to work. They didn't question it. They didn't say, well, what if I wait a couple hours and come to work? Or well, what about my dad? Uh, he, 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 could he, can he work? But your dad's not here. He can't work. When he come at the third hour, the fourth hour, every what hours he come, every time those people didn't argue or anything, they went to work. When you come to the one, the 11th hour, they went to work. This is telling us that when we have opportunity to become a Christian, we need to obey and respond. In our lives, what is the 12th hour? The end of the day, what, what is it when midnight comes? I'm going to death. sleep. It's death, it's, it's yeah. leaving yeah. The, yeah, the spirit leaving this body. And that's, that's what this parable is talking about. It's coming to that end. Our last hour is coming. Yep. And we'll be with God then. What we have to do in the meantime is work as diligently as we can as a member of the body of Christ. And God will give us the reward that he has promised us. No matter how old we are, no matter how long we've been a Christian, we can't earn it. It's given to us, but we have to do it by faith. My mother and daddy had six girls and one boy living they had four boys died in infancy all six of the girls were baptized my brother was never baptized in any church whatsoever my one sister had cancer and she was on her deathbed and she hadn't been going to church and she asked us to get her preacher she had where she had went and he come up and talked to her and he come back out and he said she made her confessions. Well, her daughter, which is a non-believer, said that didn't save her. Do y'all think it did? No. No, what they should have done is took her right then and had her baptized. She had already been baptized. But was she baptized in the Church of Christ? Yes, yes, she had been a she had been a Church of Christ member, but she had fallen away. Then all she needed to do was repent. She confessed, she confessed to her doctor and a preacher. I'm sorry, I forgot to say the Church of Christ minister was there and a pre and her doctor because her doctor wouldn't let us get around her without him being there because she was critical. And the preacher come up and and he come out and said. Uh, she made her confessions, and her daughter had a fit and said, "You shouldn't have let her done that. That didn't get her nowhere, and all that." So, what does he mean by her confession? I don't know. Uh, he just come out and said he she made her confession. She's all right with God. That's all we know. He he didn't tell her. Well, the person who made that statement was not a member of the church. No, they was. Right? Yeah, oh. yeah, he was a church Christ preacher down there in Glen Burnie, Maryland. Well, I know where that church is. Repentance yeah. is part of confession. So, repentance comes and then confession. Repentance comes from the heart. Did you make an open confession that you've been unfaithful? You've sinned. Well, whichever way, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not yeah. gonna judge that person. If that person was a member of the body of Christ, and they repented and asked God for forgiveness before they die. 
I believe she, they'll be all right with God. I did too. I, I thought she would. I mean, that's what the Bible teaches me. The Bible teaches me that the only way to get to heaven is to hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized for the remission of our sins. In other words, accepting the grace of God through faith, and I'll have heaven as, as my home. If I do, I do it any other way, it's not going to happen. Right. God also knows our hearts, so therefore, he will know if it was done righteously or not. I agree. Yeah. Was that you, Christine? That's Christina. Christina. Oh, okay. It's I was Nancy trying to find the voice. No, I couldn't tell the voice. I thought it was Christina. Yeah, mine's got an E on it. Hers has got an A. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was looking up and down the screen. See, I can only see one, two, three, four people at a time. So I, I, when I hear somebody yeah. speaking, I try to go to who it is. So I can yeah, see. Yeah, I it. can only see I, for I, I it. I was trying to find who was talking, and I couldn't find it. So I'm <laughs> sorry, I couldn't find you. I see all. Uh, I see all seven of you at one time. Well, shame on you. Well, well you, you just said. You now, should, does anybody have any questions or comments about this parable? It appears that we've all got a lot of thoughts and ideas as we went through it, and I really enjoy it when everybody gets involved in it. But in finishing this one up, I really believe the main thing for us to do is to realize <clears throat> that we can't earn salvation. No matter when we start working, to no matter how late it is, we get the same reward. But when we're called, when we hear the gospel of Christ and understand what it's saying, we need to respond to it immediately. And I believe that's what this parable is trying to teach us. Yeah. I agree with Anybody you. Anybody got any other thoughts as far as that goes? And we don't know whether there were people there that refused to take a job yeah there may have been and some there that refused to take a job just yeah. like us if we're there and we refuse to accept christ then we will not get that reward that's but right regardless of power we will get it if we accept and, and we're going to kind of see that in the next one because the next parable is about the two sons the one yeah. who says i'll go then don't go and the one says i won't go then goes you know we're going to kind of see that i think the parables of jesus is a good study because we see so many different things being taught there. And we can usually find our answer that we got in one of them or the other. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Well, you're taking a chance if you wait, like you wanna, you know, say I'll put it off and maybe when I'm 60 or so, but. I did. I, I waited till I was 50 some. And, uh, but you're missing out on the uh, blessings of God, too, by taking the chance that you can go to God in prayer and ask for help, you know, mm -hmm. and you're missing out on them. You're just in the world, and the world can't help you. I mean, some, but, uh, but you know, you can go to God and ask for help. You know, somebody's sick or your loved ones, and it, it gives you peace of mind, you know. But, you know, if you wait too long, then you know, it might be, you know, you may never never get the opportunity. You may pass on and be lost in. So, but that, that's just an opinion. <laughs> it's right. But I, I, you know, I get uh, confidence, uh, you know, in prayer that uh, I can ask and, you know, it makes me feel better. But I just leave it with, in God's hands and, you know, it takes a lot of, it eats more. It yeah. takes stress off, you know, but, uh, but, but some people's life aren't easy anyway, so. Because when we're I, still a child of God, we've had spiritual blessings, and that's something that the world won't have. Yeah. I guess the person is with us here right now that's been a Christian the longest is probably Dylene. Yeah. Dylene, let me ask you a question. Okay. How many sermons did you How many sermons did you hear before you become a Christian? From birth to fourteen years old. So. <laughs> a lot of them. So Richard, everybody went through that. We're all like that. We are, none of us in this group here 
become a member of the body of Christ was the first sermon we heard. No. Message that we heard. But we come came at the point in time when when we were called and we and we made it. So all we have to do is keep working and our reward will be there. And you know give us a You'll give us our penny at the end of the day. It's yeah. not that I don't know anything about the Bible. It's just that I have forgotten so much about the Bible. At one time in my life, I could quote you just about any verse, but my mind don't work like it used to. And I can't recall them like I used to. That's and why you learn something new every time, darling. Exactly you right. have to renew it. That's okay, though. I read it anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the purpose of what we're studying, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. We can re it, 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 we're, none of, no time at all since I've been with the church here have we studied anything new. No. It's been around for 2,000 years, and all we're doing is rehashing it and trying to come with a better and understanding of it. Right. And we learn continually. Calvin? In order to be able to obey the gospel, read Acts 2, when Peter stood up and spoke. Those people were pricked in the heart. We have to get to that point that we're pricked in the heart and know what to do and follow the steps through baptism. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, when I was five years old, I used to say the books of the Bible, Old and New Testament, frontwards and backwards to get into the movie house free. <laughs> because the woman who owned it was a member of the Church of Christ, and I would go up to go watch the cartoons on Saturday, and she'd say, say the books of the Bible for me, frontwards and backwards, and I'll let you in free. So, Betty, you better believe that I learned them <laughs> for words and backwards. But um, that's when I was five years old. So, I've got all six of you up on my screen. Christina must have left. No, Christina's still there. I've got, yeah, I've I can't got, on my I've got all six. Jeremy's gone, I believe. I'm here. Oh, Jeremy's there, she gone. just got her video off. If there's okay, that's a reason. Yeah, I see you now. I started talking and you come up. No. I think mine's just showing six people. I wish you'd take mine off and have everybody else. Uh, you should. You, all that we said tonight. You should. You, be, you should be able to go up on your screen and drag yeah. the screen to the left and bring up all six of you or all seven of you at one time. Because I, I, I can, I can, I can okay. drag it all the way back and get one screen with only four of you showing. But when I, I drag my screen to the left, all seven shows at one time. I've got two columns with all seven. Right, and you have to be in view screen in order to do that. At the top okay. of your screen, it should say view, view screen. Then you should be able to take your mouse. And come right down, right in the center of his Bible verse in the right, right between the sermon and right uh, between the people, and grab that screen and just drag it to the left, and you should see uh, all seven populate on your screen. Okay, I've got it now. <laughs> I got you, John. I've, I've got it up there. But if I put all that up there, I can't see the the message. Well, I'm running a 22 inch monitor, so I, I see it pretty good. I'm only running a 15 and a half. And I've got fine. everybody up there, but Christina and hers is. Uh, and I've got Jeremy, uh, it's, it's, it's listed as Jeremy at the bottom of the page. Yeah. Try, try to got, stretch your screen across to the side. And it moved try, my screen over, it made it screen. smaller, but I can see what you've got up there, the whole thing, Elias. Yeah, because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven up there. And if somebody else come on, I'd have eight. So it'll work. I know what you're saying, John. Uh, maybe we can look at that. And oh, no, I got it. I got, no, I got. 
Okay. Everybody on there now. I'm aside and determine your message in the other side. Look, let's finish up this lesson, and if anybody needs to go, can. As we've discussed tonight, and we've said it several times, if you want to be a member of the body of Christ, if you're here listening to this message and and you're not a member of the body of Christ, you need to be. In order to become a member of the body of Christ, you have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You must repent of your sins and, and, and turn away from them to return no more. You must confess Jesus Christ before men and be baptized for the remission of your sins. And then you can begin that journey home. But then as we begin that journey to be with God in, the, in eternity, the, uh, we come on bumpy roads and curvy roads and make mistakes sometimes. And sometimes as a Christian, we fall away. We don't do as God expects of us, and, and we, we lose our, our right to be with God. All we have to do is repent of whatever sins in our lives and ask God for forgiveness, and he'll welcome you back, welcome us back. For those members of the body of Christ who may need that, we can do that now, or you can do it yourself. That's up to you. It's private if it wants to be, but if, it, if it's a known thing to, to the world, then, then it's something you need to openly confess before, before others and, and uh, ask God for forgiveness. If you're not a member of the body of Christ and you need, we have a, we have a, you come to our site through our, you come to this through our site, which has a phone number. If you're watching this video at a later date, the, the phone number is on the first, at the beginning of the slides, at the beginning of the presentation. Give us a call and we'll do whatever we can to help you get there. If anyone needs assistance this time, let us know. Brother Richard. Yes, sir. Would you care to lead us in a word of prayer? Okay. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we, we thank you for this time that you've given us that we come together to study your word, Heavenly Father, to learn about your son uh, teaching that he walked this earth 2,000 years ago and we're thankful for your word that it is the truth and that we can look at it and know how to live our lives and that we be a good example for the others in this world that they may look to us and that we may be an example for them that that uh, they have hope of eternal life one day if if they would just repent and be baptized for the remission of their sins. And we pray that everybody would do this, that everybody would have the opportunity or that they could have what we have, Heavenly Father, that we are members of the body of Christ and we pray that they would be also and Watch over our sick and and be with Brother John and the others that are sick in the church that you would help them to get well, Heavenly Father, and bless and comfort them as only you can. And forgive us of our sins that we have committed against you and and uh we pray that you would watch over the congregation at Catholicsburg and that we may get it in the world that we can talk people into coming to church with us and hearing your word, Heavenly Father, that we, we may bring more people to Christ. We pray that you would help us in, in that way, Heavenly Father. And thank you for your son Jesus who laid down his life for us that he sacrificed his life and we are thankful for the, his shed blood that he shed for us that, that we can have hope of eternal life one day Heavenly Father forgive us of our sins we pray in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Amen. Have any questions and uh, that we went over and you have a question about anything, write it down. We can discuss it on Sunday or uh, we can discuss it here next week. Um, 
uh, before everybody goes now, did anybody lose the key at the church? I found the key yeah. off the side door about five foot out. It's a little silver key, and it looked like it had a bread tie, yellow bread tie twisted on the top of it. It's mine. <laughs> it's Christina. Okay, well, I've got your key. Thank I heard you. you that time, Christina. Okay. <laughs> The little well, light come on at the bottom of your thing, too. Okay. So hopefully I can see you all Sunday. Okay. Oh, one more thing before you go. I don't mean to, at the end, we, we were discussing okay. different things, but we need to close out this lesson and then discuss the thing. Yeah. Because so some people may have to go. Okay. Hey. Real quick. Hopefully we'll see everybody Sunday. Okay, real quick. I would like for prayers for Brian. Um, do you guys remember Allison? She used to worship with you from time to time. Allison Dickinson. Yeah, we yeah. Her dad is being admitted into the hospital right now with double pneumonia. He he had the corona and now he's going into the hospital with double pneumonia. So please keep him in your prayers. Okay. Okay. Thank you. John. Yes, ma'am. Y'all have a good day tomorrow and the weekend. You just have to wait for a second. Food fair closes at 10. Okay, I'll tell her. Bye, Bye everybody. Guys. Love you. See you later. Bye. Bye. We'll see everybody. Allison's daddy had the corona, and her mom did too, and I knew that. But stays home. So now he's got pneumonia and he's had to be admitted into the hospital. That's what it is. I'm trying to leave this thing. Can't get it.